This video is presented by Media Calico Comics. Please go to my Patreon page in the description below and become a patron. And now without further ado, please enjoy the video. On the night of the Great Masquerade on Half-World, each loony incarcerate of Cuckoo's Nest can act out his or her fantasies. This year it has also become a night for hunting. I was right in the middle of trying to stop a toy war in the Keystand Quadrant when one of the combatants made the mistake of kidnapping my Lady Lila. It takes someone either real desperate Real dumb to arouse the wrath of Rocket Raccoon. As the masqueraders marching in this mad Mardi Gras, Rocket Raccoon spies. Morris, my first mate, and Lila's uncle. He's monitoring a scanner protruding in his prostate pack. My scanner is set to detect any non loony life forms using this parade as a cover. But so far, it's registering only the animal presences of Rocket and myself. The walrus's sad headshake conveys his hopelessness better than words. He's been shattered since he learned his niece had been kidnapped by Black Jack O'Hare. At the behest of the Serpentine Lord Divine, as hair is to mayor mechanics. One of the two major toy factories in the Quadrant. She represents an immediate threat to Mayhem's present proprietor Judson Jakes, and a menace of future competition to Lord Divine. They both want her, either to marry or to murder. But Lila's my baby and I'll pulverize anybody who makes her a pawn in this war. As Rocket hunts through the torchlit procession, Walrus suddenly gets a signal on his scanner. None loony life forms registering, but neither one is Lila or her kidnapper. Rocket! Too many marchers separate Rocket and his first mate for Wall's cry of warning to be heard. Be careful! And the Wild Ranger presses on, his thoughts attire with hatred for Judson Jakes. That mole could have had it all. Fame and fortune as top toy smith in the Keystone Quadrant. But Jakes had to get greedy and crave a monopoly, thereby antagonizing his closest competitor, Lord Divine. But we animals are supposed to exist to safeguard and entertain the loonies by jeopardizing the flow of entertainment. Jake's is threatening life as we know it. Just then, Rocket's sensitive snout gets a scent of something out of place in this festive procession. <laughs> yeah! Two scents. Both of them disgusting. One like a decaying corpse. The other like molten machine oil. I'm under attack by a dread Dracula and an android killer clown. As Rocket is propelled out of danger by his roaring rocket skates, the carnivorous Dracula claws through frightened loonies to reach him. Shh! The Draculas are space creatures, never pledged like the rest of us animals to protect the loonies. And killer clowns will kill anyone they're programmed to kill. And anyone who gets in the way. One's gotta be serving Judson Jakes, and the other, Lord Divine. So it looks like both these creeps have decided they want my pet. As the deadly duo moves in to deal doom to Rocket Raccoon, a sinister snicker slips from inside one of the floats being pulled in the loonies parade. Nyahaha! <laughs> and behind the floats shielded walls, undetected by walls scanner. That wretched raccoon is cornered, boss. 
He's gonna be dead meat for sure! Careful peek through the periscope, Lady Lola. No? Then you'll excuse me whilst I place a collect call to my employer, Lord Divine. Black Jack O'Hare calling, Lord Divine. Divine here, O'Hare. What's keeping you and your black bunny assassins from delivering my beauteous bride to be? Slight change of plans, your slitherness. Both you and Jakes want to marry Lila and seize control of her fortune. But since I took all the risks, I thought maybe I'd tie the knot with her and make myself top toy smith in the K Stan quadrant. I'll never marry you, you horrid hair! The some Lila speaks the truth, O'Hare! You and she shall never wed! Was that a threat, Divine? You forget, my black bunny assassins and I are your muscle. Without us to do your dirty work, you're all hiss and no bite. You think so, do you, you cotton-tailed cutthroat? Well, you'll soon learn just how mistaken you are. Clear this chamber. It is time to summon forth the Red Breath. No, your slitherness, not the Red Breath. It comes! It comes! Curling from the vents in the floor, it wafts a writhing halitosis haze reeking of unbrushed teeth. Rise! My pet, rise! You were the last creation of my late lamented toy Smith. Before he was so callously and cruelly slain by Judd and Jake's his killer clown. Created not to amuse the ludicrous loonies, but existing only to amuse me. Do so now, my pet. Make me happy. Amuse me by seeking out my enemies and erase them. At Divine's command, the cavity-causing cloud curls forth from Space Wheel. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on Half-World. Maybe I can make the clown use up some ammo. Better to see the bombs coming in so I have a chance to dodge. Alright, you motherless murderers. I'm ready for you. Give me your best shot. Okay. Baloey! I had to ask. Still alive, Kerr? Oh, what a thrill! That gives us another chance to kill, kill, kill! I'm a peaceful kind of kid, clown. I've penned a few poems myself. But the way you twist rhymes makes every verse seem a curse. So far, my perilous playmates are working in tandem to trap me. My only hope may be to turn them against each other. You're caught, Coon! Between the fool and the fang! But here's where it ends! With the sound of a bang! I've already seen what the killer clown's explosive juggling balls could do to the loonies' fantasy facades. I couldn't survive a direct hit. And if I skate out of the way fast enough... 
The ball bomb may prove to be even more than a dread Dracula can swallow. Oh, you are a nasty cop to make my birdie blow its top. Your blaster ball was a better pill for the space bat to swallow, clown. But you'll never get the chance to prescribe another one. Rocket Raccoon's laser pistol unleashes its lethal beam of light. You made me tilt. Thus I am killed. That's cause Ranger Raccoon is always one step ahead of sleazeball slayers like you. But now what? I'm still no closer to finding Lila than before. Eh? That moon shadow being cast across me. It's Walrus! Piloting my Ranger Rocket! The good ship Rack and Ruin! When we got separated, I thought it best to hie me back to our vessel. And there use our ship's superior instrumentation to try and detect some trace of Lila and her captor. Of course, my plan bore fruit. And I soon penetrated the anti-detection screen surrounding one particular float being pulled in the loonies' procession. And found Lila and Black Jack O'Hare? Okay, well, reel me in. We've got a date with the damsel in distress. But behind the wreck and ruin, the red breath appears, consuming even the sound effects of its passage, as it erases and absorbs everything else with which it comes into contact. Until the silent, most sacred shrine of the loonies on Half-World, and the focal point of their annual pilgrimage and celebration looms directly in its path on the moonlit hillside ahead. In a dead zone on the equator of the divided planet Hapwo stands a grim, foreboding structure. Mayhem Mechanics. Hey, Judson Jakes, am in the most of a toy war, which I started to make me a master of mayhem. Keystone Quadrant, and is my chief toysmith loyally designing lethal new murder machines to further my ambition? No, my chief toysmith is not. Could we have a little quiet on the set, please? Uncle Pico, what in the name of the secret asylum do you think you're doing? Delving into the origin of Asylum and the rest of the Keystone Quadrant. Seeking in the Half-World Bible some secret that'll make sense out of this insane universe of ours. Log of the Starship Gideon. It having been decreed by the Council that their forms of insanity are incurable, we have been ordered to transport our planet's insane to a world of their own where they will be cared for by robots and kept amused by pets for the rest of their natural lives. What Pico has learned, he keeps to himself. Next to the knowledge I have gleaned from the ancient shrinks, your ambition is so small, so petty. You could have devoted your life to entertaining the loonies as the most innovative toysmith in the entire Keystone Quadrant. Instead, you chose to assassinate Lila's parents and seize their company, Mayhem Mechanics, and then war on your competitors. Why? Because you're mad, that's why. Deranged by greed and all those years you spent burrowing in dark, Dank mole holes deep underground. Enough. On the day I burrowed forth and first set squinty eyes upon the stars, I knew I had to rule them all. To do that, I had to transcend the mere manufacture of toys for hair-brained humans. 
I had to turn the robots of Half-World to making weapons. I had to eliminate any animal that stood in my way. In short, I had to start over. To clean house. Clean house? Is that all you want? Why didn't you say so? I have just the thing to keep you playing at Conquest, so that you leave me to my studies. With my vacuum sleds, you can clean up anything or anyone you like. The Wreck and Ruin comes in for a landing! Before the ancient edifice known to the inhabitants of Half-World only as Asylum. The loonies have all foiled in. And with them, Lila and O'Hare! Keep moving, and keep to the shadows, cutie. And don't do nothing to distract the loonies from their masquerade. Only you would dare defile the Loonies' most sacred sanctuary. The sacred shrine is resplendent with images neither Lila nor the Loonies who worship them can understand. The humans in these murals seem so different than the Loonies of today, and so superior to the animals with whom they coexist. Stop mooning over the murals, Arta. And move along! The shove causes Lila to stumble and hit a column. She loses no time finding the strength to scream over the falling gag. Rocket! Lila! She needs you, Rocket. But to rescue her now means violating the loonies' most sacred shrine. So call me irresponsible, Wall. I'll repent after the rescue. Rocket soars in, to the middle of the loonies' masquerade. It's Lady Rocket! Our keeper! Our protector! Let us praise you, our guardian, on this, our holiest of days. Hey, wait! Wait? We have waited all year for this moment when gathered in the ancient home of the Shrinks who founded Half World. We may celebrate the continuation of our therapy. We may not use that time to thank you and your fellow animals. For so loyally amusing us while we await the final cure? Ha <laughs> ha That's my job, Looney! Though sometimes I wonder why I don't up and chuck the whole shebang. Oh my gosh! That witch appears uninvited at the door is certainly a certain stopper. Enter the Red Breath! Wait a minute! Don't panic! How do you know it's here to cause- Huh? Whatever that thing is, Rocket, it just erased a loony! Erased? You mean like, killed? I mean like erased, wiped out as if he never even existed. And it looks like as if the same fate's in store for the rest of us trapped here with the creature in asylum. Whoa, I'm pledged to protect the humans of Half-World. I've got to keep that insidious eraser away from him. While you try to find Lila and get her out of here. Will do, Rocket. Good luck. Thanks, Uncle. Something tells me I'm gonna need it. <coughs> Nothing! My laser pistol does zip against the crimson cloud. Whoa! 
A twisting ethereal tendril caresses one of the raccoon's rocket skates and consumes it. GANGWAY! Out of control, rocket careens crazily across asylum. <coughs> oh yeah? You look like you had it easy. Being cared for by humans instead of having to care for them. So when in prehistory did my furry ancestors get stuck with the job of defending humanity's descendants against nightmarish needed races? The answers to that may be found in the Half-World Bible, a book it now looks like Ranger Rocky Raccoon will never get the chance to read. At that moment, upstairs... The Shrinks were amazing architects. This edifice has stood undamaged for centuries, revered by man and beast alike. To threaten asylum is to threaten Half-World's very way of life. Eh? My scanner! It's detecting non-loony lifeforms behind that closed door! Once again, it's time to replace my utility tusks with more martial molars to enable me to put the bite on Black Jack O'Hare. Seconds later... What the heck? It's just Willy Wool and his taser teeth, you wretched rabbits. Release my niece if you want some peace. Never mind, I'll do it myself. Oh, Uncle Wool, that was wonderful. Mere pyrotechnics, my dear. But I'll bet it felt good to lash out at our enemies, didn't it? Well, yes, it did. Black Jack O'Hare feels his skin collapsing about his ears. But his hair brain hatches a contingency plan before Lila and Wall can react. Let's see who's faster at the draw, Walrus. No! Don't hurt my uncle! I'll marry you! Tut, my dear! Nonsense! I'm known for having the fastest tusks in the Keystone Quadrant! But before Walrus can slap Ivory... Eh? What's that sucking noise outside? Rushing closer with every second! Ten points to anybody who said, Killer Clowns astride vile vacuum sleds. Judson Jakes! Only that mad mole could have sent him. They're sucking up my assassins! I'm the only black bunny left. You've made enemies of both Judson Jakes and Lord Divine now. That puts you in the same boat as Rocket Raccoon. Why not join forces? Me? Work with the law? For free? Well, alright. But I want you to know that it ain't an option I'd exercise under ordinary circumstances. Come, let's find Rocket. He'll find some way to save us. Well, he... Oh, Rocket? Whatever are you doing down there? I, uh, seem to have been boxed into a corner by a case of bad breath, Lila, my love. Rocket? What kind of behavior is that for a ranger? You fly free at once. Love to, dearest. But the cloud, uh, ate one of my rocket skates. I doubt if I could escape quickly enough unless its attention were diverted elsewhere. To be quite blunt about it, I'm pretty much doomed. Great. Join forces with us and Rocket Raccoon will save you, they said. Bull feathers. I'm getting out of here while I... Yikes! If I save you, Raccoon, you save me. Deal? I'd like to know a few of the details before we shake paws on it, O'Hare. At a time like this, you want to haggle? Well, okay. 
I'm being chased by killer clowns mounted on vacuum sleds that suck up any target they locked onto. Right now, they're locked onto me. But, by diving down, I've detoured them right into the red breath, giving you the diversion you needed to blast out of here. In that case, O'Hare, I accept. Hold on! Below, back you sled suck furiously, pulling in and pulling apart the writhing red breath, even as it erases both the sleds and their android riders. And, with the erasure of the clowns and the cloud, everything else consumed by the red breath rematerializes. Ah! I have had it! This used to be a peaceful, pleasant nuthouse of a world before Jakes and Divine started their toy war! Well, I'm gonna end it. Two sides, O'Hare! For now, on the outs as I am with my erstwhile employer, I ride with you, raccoon. I don't trust you, but you know every hideaway on Halfwell. We're gonna go Gorilla Gang and fight the toy moguls with their own weapons. And we're gonna win. I hope.